Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Brent Lesheim, Renaissance Man, Part 4. So, welcome, Mr. Lesheim. Thank you. Uh, thanks, thanks for coming me. again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good. Uh, I thought we'd, thought we'd talk about, first of all, the, the cover photo, which is of, of you and me and our friend Bob Kinsey and mm-hmm. my brother Mark uh, Ray and my parents, John and Ruth Ray, when we took went over to Pelee Island. Do you have anything... Back in 1991, I believe. Yep. Wow. Anything to say about that? Yeah, it was a uh, good time. Good uh-huh. time. Uh-huh. Yep. Have you, have you, have you been back? To no, I haven't. Peeling no. Uh-uh. We, we rode bicycles around right. the island. Right, yeah. 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 Bob Kinsey with his uh, bicycle helmet. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. My brother Mark was had this hat, this baseball cap with kind of, Kind of military with these. Oh right, uh, these little the gold leaves. Yeah, on the brim. So, anything you want to talk, say about that particular uh, about that, um, that day or that that? Yeah, it was a good time. We uh, riding bicycles. Right, we took the ferry from Sandusky to Pelee Island, and I I don't remember how long that was exactly. Maybe two hours or an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, a, it's a trip. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was fun. We. Uh, we rented bicycles, as you say, and we rode around the island. And uh, mid- midway through the bicycle trip, we stopped uh, by the water's edge. And well, twice we actually stopped by the water's edge. First, we went to this beach, nice beach there, and uh, went in the water. And then we went uh, after that. We went farther down the road, and we stopped at the uh, water's edge on a, a bunch of rocks, like a break wall that was. <coughs> was there on the uh, water's edge and we just sat there I really enjoyed that sitting on the water's edge looking at the um, clear uh, Lake Erie water up there in the eastern and the western uh, section of Lake Erie yeah did we <clears throat> we do we go to a restaurant or no we didn't you, no you brought uh, salami sandwiches salami yeah salami sandwiches <laughs> And yeah. Did we have drinking water? Um, we must have had some. Yeah, we must have had something because we couldn't have. Uh, I don't think we all could have made it. Uh, it was a pretty. It was a decent trip, long trip around the island. I mean, it took. I think maybe we were gone on that bike trip. Maybe I don't know. Five hours, maybe more. Yeah, we take. There's a. It's a pretty big island. Right. You take a. You know, the, Go around the perimeter, right. all the way around. And right. It's cool because it's here. It's this island in Lake Erie, you know. So you're right. You're looking at the water, and uh, it's cool. The far farmland in the middle. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. You see the farmers in their trucks. It's it's can't it's it's Canadian. So you, yeah, the Canadian yeah. they'll wave at. You remember when they wave yeah. at you when you're yeah yeah <laughs> they're in their trucks driving around. <laughs> yeah yeah. That was friendly. Yeah. Oh nice. yeah, it was yeah. yeah. Oh, really nice. I have to. I I I went. Uh, that's that was the second time I went. I haven't been back. Also, we we should we should go. Mm-hmm. Uh, be a very yeah. very doable thing we could do. Yeah, take take Tim. Now, Brent, you and I have been friends for since 1986, mm-hmm. 14. So that's 33 years. I'm not, mm-hmm. and we've spent a lot of time together talking. Yeah. I, I know your. I feel like I know your life pretty well. So <laughs> I. Uh, yeah, and there there are parts of your life that I find very you know interesting and yeah, and I think one probably my favorite is uh, when you were you were reading Canterbury Tales right well which was written by who's the author of that um yeah. I'm sorry I don't know right yeah, now I can't I can't yeah it. anyway famous book Canterbury Tales uh, right and you were living on West in an apartment on West 98th Street right and to me I thought that was that showed such nobility of character. <laughs> And even though you don't particularly embrace the the sold, the Renaissance man uh, 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 title, which has, has been uh, uh, thrust upon you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but that to me that that was such an amazing thing that you know here you're in a tough situation, yeah, and you had you had depression, right, right? and then you were trying to improve yourself, right, wonderful, right. You want, you want to talk about that experience, that time in your life, and. Yeah. And reading that book and that whole, what you were going through back then? Uh, well, it was a very difficult time. Um, I had moved into this apartment. It was a uh, government housing for disabled people, and uh, I was very depressed. And uh, I had to try to divert my mind from my environment because it was, uh, for me, it was a pretty 
negative environment from where I came from. Um, I came from a better environment growing up in Rocky River, and then I ended up living in this apartment in Cleveland, and uh, it was a rough neighborhood, and uh, so there was a lot of stuff going on, and I I tried to divert my mind by reading uh, a Canterbury Tales. I read some Shakespeare. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Shakespeare. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, Wonderful. yeah. Even though I don't, uh, you know, I know Shakespeare is, is the uh, classic uh, literature. It's, uh, it's definitely the thing to read, but it's hard to read for me. And, uh, mm-hmm. But I heard it was something, someone told me that it was uh, really, if you were going to read something, read Shakespeare. Actually, my guru told me that. Oh, and, uh, Paramahansa Yogananda. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. he promotes Shakespeare. Right, right, right. Okay. So I tried it, and, you know, I, I, I read I read like two or three plays, and there's, I don't know, there must be like 40-some different plays he wrote. So so I then I gave it up because it was just a real mental workout. So. And how long did you live in that apartment? Uh, for about nine months. Nine months. Yeah. So you'd spend the weekend with your parents. Right. I would, I would go back to my parents' house in Rocky River and... Uh, Yep, and yeah. so and so you don't like Sunday night football because uh, yeah you used to right. be going home. That would be around you be going home around that time. It reminds you of when you didn't want to go back. Yeah, just like when I was in school, <laughs> I didn't like going. I didn't like Monday mornings, and I really didn't care for Sunday night foot uh, Sunday football at that time either. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, and you you didn't want to go back, and your and your mother would say, "No, you're Brent. You're a man. Right. You're a man. You know, right. you need to go and." Right. And, and you and you and you you faced it. And, yeah. And you were endured. And well, you had some yeah. t- felt some tough characters there that you encountered. Right? In yes. that tough neighborhood. Right. Right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was a little bit of a challenge dealing with it for me. So How did you spend your days there? Uh well, I mean, I would uh I really wouldn't spend much time there. I would basically just uh you know, most of the day I'd go to my parents' house and then I'd come back in the evening and uh, you know, I'd go to sleep, and uh, then I'd wake up, and after I woke up, I would pretty much go drive over to my parents' house from that place. So, yeah. But I, then uh, on, on Friday and Saturday night, you'd stay overnight. Yeah, that's they, right. They, they let you yeah, do that. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. How about uh, your experience? You worked at Herb's Tavern in Rocky right. River as a cook. Right, and I like that story because you were you were had all these uh, burger patties on right. the grill, right, and uh, with the bacon and right. uh, and uh, mushrooms and yeah. cheese and a lot of orders. Yeah, and how long did you work at Herbs as a cook? I worked there six months. Six months. Okay. See, I find that very yeah. To me, it would be uh, I think wow. I don't know if I that would be very tough. All these keeping track of what you got yeah do. Yeah, so, it was it was a workout. It was a good workout. You want to talk about that experience? Well, it was a uh, it was a good job. I enjoyed doing it, and uh, the owner <laughs> was real nice. Uh, her name was Kim, and uh, I don't know if I should give her last name, but uh, anyway, she was a real nice person, and she still owns the place. Okay. And um, I just remember feeling good about being able to handle all those burgers. <laughs> And, but you said sometimes you were you would curse, and that the yeah the the, uh, the patrons the right. the folks there would would overhear. Now was it, were you cursing because the, the the oil was well, sizzling? It was just the a, whole yeah. It was the whole environment <laughs> because it, when it was a busy lunch hour, people would come in there, and the oil the orders would pile up, and oh. uh, you'd have like sixteen or seventeen orders coming in, at, you know, in rapid succession, and with. Burgers, fries, drinks, you know, BLT, whatever. It was just a mixture. You know, it just wasn't all burgers. I had to make other things, too, so. What else did you make? Well, like, hey, I made the deep fryer. It was onion, French fried onions, French fries, mush, French fried mushrooms, uh, and that sort of thing. Did you make the drinks? I mean, did you have, was No, there... I didn't have to do the drinks. Oh, that was okay. the, the bartenders handled the drinks. Was there another cook? Yes, there was. So you yes. guys worked together. In the beginning, but then I started to work by myself in there too. So, yeah. You get along with the other cook? Yeah, I did. He was he was a nice guy. He showed me he showed me the ropes. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that was that was pretty good. 
you you did that. Yeah, I, th- I don't know if I could do that. The uh... yeah, yeah, it was fun. I mean, I had cooking in my uh, oh. family. In my family, my mother was an excellent cook, and so was my grandmother. So they, I, I guess I had it kind of in my genes being able to, sort of what they, multi, multitask in the kitchen. So, mm-hmm. how about your experience at the working at the salt mines? Yeah. How long did you do that job? That was uh, seven months. Seven months. Okay. Yeah. Want to talk about that experience? When what 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 year was that? That was 1982. 82. I, I started in August of 82. Okay. Yeah. And the, wait, her, what year was Herbs? Herbs was... Um, 85? No, uh, 81. 81. And, um, okay, and Canterbury Tales was... Uh, yeah, that was, uh, well... In, that was, in the 90s? Uh, no, that was in the... Uh, Twenty in about well, I'd say it was about eleven, twelve years ago. So, uh, so let's can you tell tell us about your experience working in the salt mines in Cleveland? Yeah, that was a physically demanding job. It uh, I really tested my physical limits in the beginning. Uh, as I as I worked there over time, it got easier. But uh, yeah, I remember. Uh, when I was first got there, the one foreman told me, he says, you should start lifting weights because you need to do it for this job. So oh. I did. <laughs> well, I was already doing that, working out. But, it, yeah, it definitely helped me do the physical aspect of the job. So, But there was, uh, you know, there was a little, I was in a union, and uh, there were some union demands, and uh, I didn't particularly care to follow them. But, yeah, <laughs> I mean. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, one time I was walking in the mine working, and these guys were ahead of me, and they were in a little group, and uh, they had a petition going around for a grievance. And, uh, you know, they said, hey, will you sign this paper? And I didn't really particularly have any grievance. I didn't want to sign it, really, but I I did. I went along with it anyway to sign it, and uh, so... So where did you uh, you drive? Where did you park your car? Where did you? Yeah, drive? I parked. There was a parking lot. In, where was this? It was uh, in, next to the uh, plant in a parking lot. Where? Where in Cleveland? Uh, it was on Whiskey Island. On oh, Whiskey, so you drove to Whiskey yeah, Island. Yeah. And parked your car. And, right. And that that's where you got to go down into the earth from that's there. That's right. Yeah. Okay. About a mile and a half down. Wow. It's an escalator. It was an elevator. An elevator. Yeah. Ooh. How long? Okay. It'd and you take about a minute. And a half to get maybe a minute to get down there. So what kind of work did you do at the salt mine? Well, I mean, in the beginning when I got there, I just worked in the surface warehouse and I uh, loaded pallets with bags of salt to be uh, shipped to different places around Ohio and maybe even the Midwest. And uh, after a few months of doing that, they put me down in the mine and I worked in the uh, mine. Uh, working along the conveyor belts, uh, pick, shoveling salt that had fallen off from the conveyor belts and shoveling it back onto the conveyor belts and uh, that sort of thing. And uh, I worked with a little uh, dynamite. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I was, at first I was a little uh, concerned. Okay, I'm handling dynamite, <laughs> dynamite here. Yeah, uh, it was... Uh, and uh, I worked with this Scottish man. He was from, uh, oh. he would go all around the country and he would do this job. It was called, he was a muck swamper. And he was where he would go down into the bottom of the shaft and where all the mud and everything collected and debris. And he would have to clean it out just to keep the shaft running properly. And so uh, they put me on a job with him once we, we had to dynamite uh, sal- the salt so uh, a front end loader could come and pick it up and take it to the uh, re- processing area. And that was a very hard job. It was, thank God it was only for two days because my hands were spent after that, working that working a drill there. And uh, so you didn't have, you needed a glo- glove. I needed gloves, but I didn't have any. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had your, on, your hands on this drill that was on rotating? The, on the drill bit, yeah, it was a drill bit. And uh, I had to hold it like this to keep the drill set, steady while he... While he held the drill, because it was a heavy drill, it was about 50 or 60 pounds, and uh, 
so it took two people to operate this drill. So that was crazy. I uh, I should have I should at the time I should have said no. I I'm not going to do it because my hands are hurting. But you know, being a stupid young kid, I I did it without complaining. Macho. Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to be a macho man. Yeah. But your hands got burned, right? Yeah, they got burned and blistered. Yeah. So. And then you worked the next day with. Yeah. But yeah, you'd I went think, back. You'd think you wouldn't be able to work, right? How how did you work with those burned hands? Well, I guess the hands were, the, the skin surface was already broken from the blisters. So, you, you know, it was like. It reco- you recovered overnight. Well, I didn't recover, but I was broke. I was definitely broken in. And even though I had these blistered hands with blo- broken blisters and pus coming out, <sighs> I, <laughs> I still, I got over the initial pain and I, I was able to work with it, even though I, the pain wasn't quite as severe as the day before. So You didn't get an infection. No, luckily. Those, those luckily. Blister, you got open blisters. Luckily. You yeah, know, yeah, exactly. Guy. Huh. Yeah, it was um, a very, I was a very stupid kid. And uh, they didn't, you know, the, the guy didn't say anything about getting gloves. So he just said he didn't have any. So, so you felt pretty, you felt pretty proud. You were like, you were a, you're a salt miner. You felt like yeah, polygamy. And for a while, I did feel that way. I'm a miner. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. And pretty a tough guy, right? Yeah, I, I did the job. I wanted the job. Yeah, I thought I had it would make me stronger. So, in a way, mentally and physically. But uh, And you can be proud of that. Proud that you were a miner. Yeah, that's yeah, true. You got the coal miners and the different type of mining. I mean, because that's... I mean, right. I, I didn't... To me, that's like one of the toughest jobs, you know, being a miner, going yeah. down into the earth. And wow. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was hard. But I heard it's not as tough as a coal mine job. Coal miner job is much, much dang- more dangerous and tougher. And uh, some coal mines are much smaller. The salt mine was much bigger. You had much more space to move oh. around than a coal mine. So, and it wasn't, yeah, the, it wasn't as dangerous. So, um, so uh, but... Uh, my grandmother was definitely not happy that I was working in the salt mine. She was, she was worried about me. Right. Yeah, and I remember that. Sure, sure. So, yeah. And uh, you uh, you said sometimes you would go sleep? You would. Yes, you know, sometimes I would fall asleep in the salt mine. Look for a place to sleep, a dark area. And exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's not very good. No, but anyway. no, no, it isn't. Nope. But how long would you s- sleep for? Oh, I don't know, hour and a half, two hours. <laughs> and they, and they, you got away with it. I got away with it. I think they. Where the heck have you been last time? Exactly. Well, no one ever said that, but uh, yeah, I, I think they knew I was up to shenanigans. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. How about the time you worked at a at a car wash? Yeah. Uh, what that, year was that? Um, I'd say that was. Uh, let's see. Uh, hmm, 20 years ago. Where was the car wash? Uh, in Cleveland, on the west side of Cleveland. Okay. Yeah, yeah. How long were you there? Uh, I was there for about, uh, I'd say six months, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, and I've never gotten over the disappointment when you were, you were talking about the vending machines. Right. You would stock. Right. Or restock. And right. I always assumed it was, I imagine Brent, you know, with the M&Ms and the Snickers <laughs> yeah. and Reese's and so yeah. forth. And it turns out, and to me, that sounded pretty fun. A fun thing to do. And it, right. It turns out it, there were cleaning supply, car cleaning supplies, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Car cleaning supplies. So um, tell us about that job. Well, that job was good. I, um. Uh, they uh, I had some responsibility. I felt like I had some responsibility, and I took that job seriously. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, uh, you know, I uh, I would go around the grounds and I would pick up all the trash, and I really tried to do my best picking up all the trash. And I actually got some notice from customers. Uh, a couple customers would come by and they'd say, "Yeah, you're really keeping this place clean and everything," because it was in the in Cleveland and. A lot of times the trash is just flying around. People don't care. A lot of times they just throw it out their windows or whatever. And but uh, yeah, so one Maybe. time I found a twenty dollar bill on the ground, so I picked it up and put it in my pocket. <laughs> Maybe the previous uh, guy working there would allow the trash to accumulate. Yeah, I mean he 
yeah, he didn't do as good a job as I did picking up the trash. That, that job was definitely like a training for me. Uh, I felt like I was training for something, uh, and I took it seriously. So, But I couldn't, uh, I didn't like the, uh, a lot of, being in Cleveland, uh, I mean, one of them, yeah, a couple of them were kind of in the ghetto, and, uh, you know, these kids would come in with their cars, and they'd be blasting the radio, and I just couldn't take that music and a lot of times I would have to turn, tell them to turn it down and most of the time they listen one time a guy got real angry and he didn't want to do that and we kind of got in an argument <laughs> okay. so but uh, was it rap music exactly most of it was rap music yeah, yeah that can be kind of yeah tough to yeah sometimes out here the parking lot they'll be playing it I kind of love right I, think, oh, I wonder how long they're gonna play right it for. <laughs> right right and like you know that would be like all day so that you'd hear stuff like that and on and off yeah on and off yeah uh-huh, yeah uh-huh. so let's see here what else we can uh, oh when you cross the bay of fundy in canada yeah let's, let's hear about that uh. well um i didn't actually cross the bay of fundy but i saw the bay of fundy i was there standing on the edge of the bay of fundy on in this by this visitor center in st john's new brunswick and I was that was very interesting uh, watching the tidal oh. shifts there. Uh, it was twice a day. There was a ninety foot tidal shift. You know, ninety foot high of water would go down. To, right. Yeah, it was very interesting to see that. I heard about it when I was. I actually saw it when I was a kid in elementary school. We watched a uh, documentary about the Bay of Fundy, mm-hmm. and I. I always thought that was interesting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and you could really see it going up and down because it's or kind of. Oh gradual. yeah, I mean the water, the water. There was like a river on the St. John's River, and the water would just rush out at a certain time of day, uh-huh. and in the morning it would rush in like a torrent of a torrent river, and it was uh, very cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I liked it a lot, and uh, watching the boats go out with the tide, it was like. Uh, rapids going out when it would go out in this river and there was like a big 60 foot sailboat with he had the full sails going in this river and he was just going with the rapids out to sea it was cool so they would do the same when they came in so okay and then uh, uh-huh. there was this guy at the visitor center he was a uh, he welcomed people and he was wearing a kilt with a uh, Scottish cap and uh, everything, and you know he was definitely looked like he was Scottish to me. He was real friendly. He was, you know, giving me information on what the sights to see there. So was that when you were working in Maine at that summer camp? No, that was another time. That was another so time. You just drove from Cleveland to, to yes the Bay of Fundy. First, I yeah, first I stopped in Vermont, then Maine, and then. Bay of Fundy was, yeah. And you did a little camping? You had, oh, yeah, you had I, I camped, yes. Yeah. So you just took off? Yeah, yeah. How long were you gone? Uh, about two, two and a half weeks. And then, but you didn't, the, the Bay of Fundy was where you stopped and yes. decided to come home. Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, you, right. you, you thought about it, but you <clears> thought, no, it's, uh, I'm yeah. far, too far away from home. Yeah, the, uh, the there was a man, he was like in his 60s, he, he was the uh, camp owner and he would you know accept people coming in and leaving and uh, I would talk I would stop in the office after a day of touring St. John's and talk to him a little bit and he yeah he came to a close and he said go home and when I heard that I knew it was time for me to go home because he could see that I was uh oh okay kind of wandering around and uh lost soul exactly mm-hmm. exactly and he knew I was from Cleveland I because we, we talked and uh yeah, he said, yeah, I think he just goes, go home. Okay. Because, okay. uh... Is there any other time in your life you'd like to talk about? Um... Or experience? Well, there was a... I, right now comes to mind when we, uh... I went with a soccer team from Cleveland. We went to Germany. Uh, that was 1981. And, uh, we played in Germany about eight or nine games against different teams and one game specifically stands out in my mind uh, we played this team from Hamburg <coughs> and they were their name was Concordia Hamburg and at the time they were like the second or third highest best team in Germany um, in their age bracket and uh, they were supposed to annihilate us and uh, oh. yeah like 
and uh, we played them, and we won the game 1-0, and that always stands out in my mind. Oh. Because after the game, the players wouldn't shake our team's hand because they were so disgusted, and, you know, they they weren't very sportsmanlike, <laughs> and they so they just left without shaking hands after the game because they thought we didn't deserve to win, but we won. So that was and that a, just goes to show you, you know, right? The underdog. Yeah, they it, thought, oh, these Americans, they're right. not good at soccer. And right. The Germans are great at soccer. Exactly. Right. And we we beat them, uh-huh. and we we were told before the game, oh, we'll be lucky if we get a, come out of the game losing six to nothing. So. <laughs> How old were you? Uh seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I had a friend, I had, well, I had a couple friends, two or three friends on the team, and uh, the one friend was, uh, his name was Peter Lenahan, he was Irish-American, he li- he was from Cleveland, and he scored the winning goal, and I remember he was just jubilant after scoring, we were all jubilant after scoring that goal, because that, ga- that game, they were literally bombarding us with shots on goal that would hit the post or just miss, or our, oh, our goalie was outstanding, he was like the best player on the team that day, so he saved us. Was it one to nothing? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Very satisfying. Oh yeah, it was. You still feel pride. Yeah, I do. Right. I do. Yeah, being it's a great. part of something like that. Right. I I, I underestimate really the uh, the moment and the time. I mean, that was a great thing. That was a great accomplishment for right. me at the time. Right. So. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Anything else <clears throat> from your life that comes to mind you'd like to get into? Um, well, I don't know. Uh, I just know meditation and uh, yoga meditation through, I learned, I was introduced to it by you, and that has literally changed my life, the SRF teachings, and uh, that has, yeah, that's saved me from, from myself, from Self-destruction, and I'm very grateful for that. Self-realization fellowship. Yes, yes. So it's helped with your severe depression. Yes, and, uh, yes. And recovery. Yes, yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, same same for me. Uh-huh. And we're in the same boat, yeah. Right. Best thing in my life by far. And we have the picture of Paramahansa Yogananda back there, who's our, right. our guru and the, who, a great saint who... Uh, right. Who's... Uh, yeah, it's, it's an incredibly powerful and amazing, and yep. helped me to be uh, happy and happy and productive. We both have had depression and, uh, yeah. and SRFs. And just yeah, by far the best thing in my life, and, uh, mm-hmm. so, and I'm happy for you that it's you found the same. That's one of the, one of the things we definitely have that in common. Right. You know, we Thank know what, you. We know how much it's how helpful it can be for right. anyone willing to you know mm-hmm. to make some effort. Oh yeah. And, uh, yeah. So. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So my, <coughs> my life has really gotten better in the last year and a half because for 15, 16 years I was in a very deep, deep depression and uh, mm-hmm. I came out of it about a year and a half ago. Gradually I've come out of it. And, I, you know, I'm not saying I'm mm-hmm. perfect, but it's helped. It appears we're out of time. Thank you so much for coming today Thank and you. participating Thank and, you. and making another other yeah. uh, uh, presentation. Mm-hmm. So we'll 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 come we'll come back. Uh, we'll do this again. Okay. okay. So okay. Anyway, so uh, dear viewer, thanks again for watching. Really appreciate it. You might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. Thank thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.